Sam, are you on the line? I'm on the line. Sam, this is Richard. Richard, this is Sam. I'm Albert. Okay. Yeah, hi, hi Sam. Richard. How you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm calling from Colorado. How's the weather out there in Florida? Hey, windy and cloudy, but not snowy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a couple of snows so far, but today it's the blue skies and no snow on the ground. <laughs> oh, okay. It's beautiful out there, I know. I I toured Pikes Peak Forest one time. I spent 30 days there. Oh, oh, really? I live in Woodland Park, uh, right? Oh, okay. You know where that's at? I know generally, but I'm not familiar with it particularly. Yeah, when you drive up into the mountains, uh, uh-huh. I'm behind Pikes Peak up in the mountains from Colorado Springs. Surrounded right. by uh, Pikes Peak National Forest. Oh, what a lovely place to live! <laughs> All right, well, good. I understand that you're uh, you're almost like uh, I could almost call you a professional landlord. Well, I've been doing it since '86, not full time, but I've been full time for over ten years now. Okay, and you and you uh, spend most of your uh, I mean, you manage your own properties, right? Yeah, I'm retired, and it keeps me busy, and it gives me some shelter of my retirement income, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And so today we're we're talking about your house that you're uh-huh. living in. And uh, do you do you have an idea where you might be moving to? Uh, I had bought a house to move into, and before I had it finished, someone wanted to rent it, so I rented it out from under myself. <laughs> So okay. I'll, I'll find another one. Actually, I have a family home in North Carolina I could spend as much time as I need to, and it's fully, in fact, I'm going there this weekend and uh, to winterize it, but I could, I just take my toothbrush and I'm home and got everything I need. <laughs> what, what, what part of North Carolina? Just west of Asheville, a little town called Canton. Oh, my gosh. That's where my, my, my wife grew up. That's where my mother-in-law is from. You know the 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 paper mill there and everything. Oh, you're kidding! What's her name? Uh, I mean, your wife's maiden uh, name. Linda Owen. She worked. Linda. Yeah, Linda Owen. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's Linda Nichols. Linda Nichols. Linda I... Nichols. And uh, was her brother's name Smith? Uh, Smith um, Nichols. No, his. Uh, let's see. T- I think it was Owen. Yeah. Uh, her maiden name is Owen. Um, okay, okay. She had, and she, had, yeah, she had a brother down in Florida, actually. Uh, uh-huh. Uncle Charles. Uncle Charles well, and Uncle Tony. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm she, sure that she her retired family... from the, uh, the paper mill there. Well, I, if you talk with her about the Smathers family, there's plenty of Smathers up there. She might even have known my family somewhere along the way. Uh, probably. I'll mention it to her, the Smathers yeah. family. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the, my home is two and a half miles outside of Canton on the southeast side in Dutch Cove area, if she's familiar with that. Okay. But anyway, that's not what you called about. Yeah, well, that's what a coincidence, <laughs> but you know. It's a small world. It's a small it? town, Albert, too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And Albert from South Africa, I loved our visit to South <laughs> Africa. I'd love to move to Cape Town, but I can't. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day we'll do that together, then. Oh, I'd love that. And I'll bet you could show me not only Table Mountain, but a lot of other good things. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let me ask you what's important to you. Um Getting the highest price for the house or getting the most amount of cash or maybe getting the most amount of cash flow if we bought your house? Well, I, I both, really. Uh, okay. One, I've sort of got a price in mind that I would sell for. If it were a cash price, it would be one thing. But if, if it's a terms price, if I could get sort of a lump sum initial payment. What I'm trying to do is buy a piece of property on the Hillsborough River here that I've found. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that'll have to be a cash deal for me. So cash is king right now all the way around. But I don't know on a note. Uh, it, I own the home in a family estate. Uh, both of my daughters are on the title as well, and they are agreeable to do anything that I want to do. Okay. They can take payments uh 
uh, we could split the payment three ways. They would get their share if you made it on an automatic deduction, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, All right. But, um, and then uh, now another thing we can talk about for raising more cash for you is if you were interested in uh, getting some of the uh, regular uh, income that you're getting on your uh, portfolio, you know, your other properties. Right. You know, if we did anything on those, we can raise more cash on those. And sometimes what we look to do, we actually specialize with retiring landlords, and we look to get you maybe the same net income that you're getting now without managing the properties, you know, without, uh, you know, get, get you some cash, but also get you the same income that you're getting managing the properties without the ownership. Uh, are, are taxes a concern at all as far as, like, capital gains or anything like that? You know, Capital you gains are not a concern at this time because I've had so many write-offs over the years that I'm pretty well okay on any capital gains issues. Okay. Now, I have an accountant that I have to talk with to verify if there is a ceiling or a, a limit in any way. And are those your properties or family properties? Well, I have a combination. Uh, the, the house I live in is a family property. Uh, the other properties I have, some of them are in my name individually, and some of them are in my corporate name. Okay. Uh, either way, it's just a matter of administratively handling whatever the law requires, but I have full authority on everything. Have you ever done an installment sale in the past, taking back a note? I do have one that's existing right now that we could consider as a part of that uh, or that lump sum consideration. Okay. Because, yeah, if, if there is any tax um, liability, you, you know, you only have to pay it when you receive it on an installment sale. Right. Uh -huh. And and our, our goal, our plan, with the way, the crazy way the economy is today, is, you know, we have to uh, take a long-term buy-and-hold approach. Oh, absolutely. And that's been my approach since day one, because in the 80s, when they went through the rest of the thing, I had properties that most people gave up and I kept mine going exactly good and so uh, so one of the ways we can push the price up is to kind of calculate some of the uh, excess profits we plan on getting down the road and just add it to the purchase price today and that's one of the ways we we pay top dollar so I can give you one example um, now I know you want to raise some cash but I'll give you an example. The more cash we give you, kind of the price comes down from there, you know, because we're using the, those funds. The more funds that we use, you know, we can't use those funds on other properties. Oh, absolutely. I understand. Okay. So we could pay up to, you know, 267000 uh for your house on Flagstone uh, if you just wanted the income stream. And then the house could support $750 a month as an income stream. And that that in doing it like that would get the kind of like the highest price, okay? And then we come down from there. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, that price would be uh, compatible with what I would be interested in. The income stream. Uh, uh, what kind of note would we be talking about that it would be paid off within a what period of time? Uh, the longer we go. Uh, and again, so what we do is we we don't really plan on any appreciation for the next four or five years. Mm -hmm. I don't really see anything on the horizon to change that. <laughs> uh, but I but over time, as you know, you know, real estate goes up. So the longer we go, the more uh, you know we push up the price. So that's on a 15 year, 180 months of payments. Um, it would be 750 a month for 180 months. And then a balloon payment of 132, so kind of a lump sum, 132,000 at the end of 15 years. And along the way, it would be 750 a month uh, on a note secured by the property. Mm hmm Okay, and that would be with no money down at, in yeah. the beginning. Yeah, and let me let me contrast that with money down. Okay. Okay. Uh, that would be so. To give you an example, if we gave you fifteen thousand down at closing, uh, give you six hundred dollars a month 
on the property, and the price would be two forty-five. Okay. Two forty-five, six hundred a month, and that would be fifteen thousand. Okay, and what are my recourses if anything turns sour on the deal? If anything went sour on the deal, we would we well. If anything went sour on the deal, we would take care of you anyways. We would just use our other resources to take care of you. Um, so you shouldn't. If we had a problem with the property, you know, we shouldn't have that affect you, right? Because we're promising to pay regardless. You're just yeah, uh, right. You're just a secured lien holder. You know, if the if the market tanked, you know, or whatever, uh, we would, and we or we had any problem with the property, something unexpected, we would still uh, be committed to taking care of you. And of course, your recourse would be to, you know, get the house. You know, if yeah, uh-huh. you know, so that's your recourse, just like a, just like a bank. But if we if we couldn't keep our agreements for any reason, we would just give you the house. You wouldn't have to, uh, you know, go through a legal process. I mean, technically, if. If we didn't cooperate, you would have to, but <laughs> uh, yeah. well, basically what we're saying, if we can't keep our agreements, we'd be happy to get the house back. Well, that sounds fair to me, but um, I I think, and the the 15000 down 600 a month would be the minimum long-term arrangement I would accept. Okay. Uh, I can run that by my daughter's. Um, if we lump together some of the other properties that I'm currently renting, uh, and that increase the monthly payments uh-huh. uh, enough for me to support what I'm trying to do on the uh, uh, the ri- river property that I'm looking at, mm-hmm. we might be able to work out a deal because, quite frankly. If I buy the river property, the house on it, I'm going to have to spend probably a year rehabbing it the way I want it. And if I'm out of looking after the rental properties I've got, that would be uh, that would be attractive to me. Okay. 